live stream. Thought we had a good practice today. Uh, a little warm out there, a little cooler Monday, and had a lot better tempo. But uh, we had a good physical practice today and did a lot of good old good work, more than we usually do. Uh, we got to compete a little bit. And I thought that was good. I was really proud of the guys for the way they practiced. Questions? Cause I'm, go ahead. I think because I'm guessing the, the game's going, you know, the game's already a big game, obviously, but I guess for Cade Mays, it may be a little extra. Special. I'm just wondering, in, in cases like this, guys playing against his hometown team, do you ever just kind of have to talk to a guy and make sure he's got all his emotion reined in a little bit? He just kind of let him go with the flow. You know, I think Cade's a bright kid, comes from a really good family. I think they understand and acknowledge that it's a big deal to them. He and his dad haven't played there, and he's a legacy and all that. But at the end of the day, when you get between the lines, a lot of that stuff fades out. You start playing the game, and you play physical, you play hard. He wants to do as good as he can, but he's got to focus on what his assignments are play football and hopefully he'll be a guy out there we still don't know uh, how the lineup's going to play out sure. but he is uh, a great competitor he's a great kid he comes from a good family and at the end of the day I know he'll give us an A, a effort. What do you mean just getting him from I mean uh, last year you've ever signed him in, in the process of what it meant to you? Well, I think that Georgia's a great academic institution it's a place that he knew he had an opportunity to come in and play mm -hmm. um, he wanted to play for championships and I know that's important to him and, and he really had a good relationship with Coach Pitt. At the end of the day, that long-term relationship with him probably won out because they had a new staff coming in. How has the uh, competition on the o, on the O line gone these first uh, couple days? Well, yesterday was you know not as more assignment-based, correction-based, not uh, competition-based. Today was competition-based, but I hadn't seen that whole tape, so um, I have to watch it today and see. But we had about three guys moving in and out of the lineup, rotating guys around. With the pass rush, obviously uh, DeAndre Walker at the beginning against Missouri, after seeing you know them being capable of providing that pressure, is that something you're looking for consistency wise? Uh, I'm always looking for pressure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be honest, DeAndre has played well in some of the other games. We haven't given him a lot of opportunities. I mean, at the end of the day, the objective for us is not to lead the country in sacks or lead them in tackles for a loss. It's to win the game and grow our team. And a lot of games we've had so far. We've had to get our team better, and he first he got his first real opportunities the other day, and he took advantage of. It seems like what you guys ask of Walter Grant in terms of being that outside linebacker, but playing so much space, it seems like that's a pretty difficult, you know, kind of. I'm like your head may swim doing that. How, how has he been in that role? And and would you would you say that as well that it's maybe a, a tougher position for a guy like that? It's a tougher position if you could never play it in space, but Walter grew up as an athlete. He played in space. He played high school tailback. He played out there in high school. Quay was the same way. These guys, some of these kids come in here having played that position in high school where other guys played with their hand in the dirt. So the transition from hand in the dirt to stand up space player is really hard. But the harder thing for those kids is space player to hand in the dirt. So Walter's more comfortable playing in a lot of that stuff because that's what he's always done. He, he would struggle more having to play in a box or, you know, inside uh, six technique, stuff like that. But we don't ask him to do that. So he, he fits what we ask him to do. How, how Coach, how difficult <coughs> is it for a, for a new coaching staff to come in to kind of to put their system in You change the terminology, just looking at what Jeremy's gone through with, with, at Tennessee? I mean, how long did it take before you, you're, you felt like your players were kind of jiving with your system and your culture? Well, we were fortunate here to come into a system that was very uh, similar to ours defensively. There was not major overall changes um, schematically, so a lot of the kids had a, a ground level base. I think you'd have to ask Jeremy how long that takes in, in, his, in their system, because I don't know exactly. I, I know that for us, it was a smoother transition, maybe not offensively or special teams, but from a defensive standpoint, we had some carryover. There's, you mentioned earlier that there were some perceptions or things being said about Tennessee from a talent standpoint. You recruited a lot of the same kids, I think Ty Chandler in particular. What, do you, what about Tennessee's talent on their roster compared with maybe other SEC teams? Where do you think they're at on that? I really don't have any. Uh, Tennessee's got a good football team, and that's all I worry about. I watch the tape. I say, who, you know, who is this guy? Who is this guy? How does he play? I'm not looking to see who recruited him, what he was rated. Our concern is with us and stopping Tennessee. And that's really all I'm worried about. To so uh, follow up on the pressure and everything, I remember a couple weeks ago I asked you, you know, about the balance of run defense and uh, pressure on the quarterback. And, and like you had said, it's either part or the other. I mean, in terms of your run defense, do you feel like it 
going ahead and not facing teams that are going to spread you out like Missouri did, you feel like that may make it easier to stop the run? I don't know. I don't think. I really don't think that it's one way or the other. Now I think that you can be good at both. I mean, there been a lot of good defenses that can rush the passer and stop the run. I think that's a good quality to have. I just think that for us, it's stop the run first, given the, the choice of the two. Certainly, I want to be good at both. But uh, you know, moving forward, I'm not really concerned with who we're playing coming up. I'm worried about who we're playing right now. And the biggest, most important thing to me is stopping the run. Do you think negative plays, not just sacks, I know affecting the quarterbacks most important, do you think negative plays by the defense is an important telling stat? Absolutely. It's one of the most uh, important stats we look at, and it's a havoc rate, it's ability to cause negative plays, put people behind the sticks. And we've done off-season studies the last three years to see who led the country in tackles for a loss. Why did they lead the country in tackles for a loss? What are they doing? What can we do that they're doing? Um, early on, we actually thought we were doing pretty well at that, and we haven't the last couple of games done as well. So it's one of those things you always want to have to put people behind the sticks, especially in today's day and age. I think to do that, you got to put yourself at risk sometimes. And uh, we probably haven't done it as well as we want to. I also think if you look at the SEC defenses, there's traditionally not a lot of those teams up there in tackles for a loss. Because when we did the study, Clemson was one that popped up. Miami was one that popped up. Uh, Michigan was one that popped up. You didn't see SEC teams popping up. Why is that? I don't know. There's pretty good defenses in our conference. Kirby, you've had injuries on the offensive line, inside linebackers, secondary running back. How do you feel about your depth? given that you guys have perceived to be pretty well the last two years? I don't think you ever have enough depth. I don't think any coach in the country would tell you, I feel really good about my depth. I mean, if I had to say that, I would say it would be a receiver. But outside of that, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't feel good about our depth. I don't think you can ever have enough good, ready-to-play players. And we're certainly going through that now. But we're also developing our young players. I don't think that enough people worry about that during the season. It's a long season. At some point, we're going to need somebody to play. So we get threes reps. We put our best players in the scout team. I mean, Malik Herring's a guy that played 15, 20 snaps. He played on the scout team last week. And you know what? He played really good in the game because he did. Um, we send guys down all the time to go be scout team players and come back. And I think that organization in practice really helps develop your players. I see it in Luke Ford. He's getting better every practice because he's down there with us getting slobber knocked. And that's the best way to get better. You guys talk about your practice is tougher than games. Does that uh, show up when you lose a guy in the middle of the game and you have to plug in? I think it helps, but you also might lose a guy in practice. You know, so there's a catch-22 to both, and you got to be smart. But I'm going to err on the side of being tough, physical, practicing hard so that you get in the game, your players are prepared for it. When you talk about focusing on you guys, you guys kind of looking in the mirror as a team, how do you balance that with getting ready for, for another team and focusing on what they do and, and how much leeway do the players have to, you know, when do they get to start looking at, you know, film of, let's say, Tennessee this week? Did they start on Sunday? Were they able to look at it before that, stuff like that? Oh, yeah, we, work at, we look at the next team immediately. Those kids can start watching it Saturday on the plane back from Missouri. I mean, we have iPads with all the information, and we study the next team immediately. Um, but we also correct ourselves because the other team's looking at who? Us. So if you don't fix you, you don't do copycat plays, you don't do things that give you a problem, they're going to do things that give us problems. I mean, we're going to do things that give them problems. That's what football is. There's a lot of uh, copycat going. So you correct your mistakes, you try to get fundamentally better, and you focus on yourself. But we, we watch Tennessee all week. When I say prepare and get us better, that's part of getting us better is acknowledging what they do well and trying to take that away. I want to ask you about uh, Karis. Jackson, a guy who uh, came in early on Saturday against Missouri. Um, well, what type of developments have you seen from him? And I know y'all played him at the uh, work running back spot a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Kyrus is a really good athlete. He's got a thick body. He's, he's in the Tyler Simmons mold. Uh, he's a very bright kid, very conscientious kid. Unfortunately, he had an injury in camp, probably set him back some. Um, and he's been getting over the hamstring hip flexor. And, He's done a good job of it. He's a he's a really tough competitor. He handles coaching well and enjoy coaching him. He's uh he can really help us. What's the coach, what is the update on Tyler Simmons? And the second question, I think you've only given up three passes longer than twenty yards. Is that a byproduct of teams not taking shots or are you guys doing some things with your double safety look deep? I know Odom was talking about that. Yeah, I still don't know on Tyler. He has not been able to do much the last two days. So again, we're looking at he's running, which is positive. So obviously he's not his lower body, but whether or not he'll be able to play this game, I'm not sure. But 
just trying to get back. Um, as far as the, the long yardage plays, I think Mel does a great job <coughs> in the secondary, leveraging the ball, um, trying not to expose yourself to big plays. And to be honest, when you look at the tackles for a loss and the sacks that we're lacking, that, that probably points to that other area, that there's three or less, <clears throat> three 20-yard passes or more in that area that you're uh, trying to prevent big plays and make people drive it through on you and create turnovers with your defense and fumbles, interceptions. How close is Devon Wilson getting to get that? He's doing some good things. He's out there practicing. I mean, he's out there running around moving. He's competitive. He's working on the scout team, just trying to build back his confidence. But I'm not sure when he'll be uh, cleared for high contact and tackle. I don't know his availability, but if you guys are able to get a guy like Monty Rice, uh, he's able to get him on Saturday. How much does that kind of improve the uh, linebacking play, considering you have all four guys who are taking Yeah, it'll be a big bonus for us. He's practiced every day, but he did last week. You know, I, I, he's definitely moving around better. It looks much better. But that's not I mean, last week. It was rough on him. So I don't know what percentage you could say he's at. I certainly hope he plays. He's physical. We need him. He brings a mentality and toughness to our defense that we need. He strikes people. Um, I just hope he plays because we have depth problems when he doesn't because our rotation is not the same as it was previously. What, what's led to uh, Wiley Ridley's uh, consistency this season maybe that wasn't there at the beginning of last year? I don't know that it wasn't there. I, I was going to say work has led to it. But then you would say, well, he didn't work last year. Riley really works hard. I mean, he works hard at practice. He competes at practice. It's important to him. He's one of the highest, uh, uh, what do you call it, the GPS systems every day. He has the most yard. I mean, he just really competes. It's important to him. But it was that way last year. So, I mean, we got a quarterback that's played a whole year. That has a lot to do with it instead of his first college games. And I think that has a lot to do with it. He's playing with confidence. He's playing fast. Two more questions? But from a more holistic standpoint about DeAndre Swift, you know, how do you see him continue to, to grow and develop between this year and last year? From a what standpoint? Holistic standpoint, how about him? He's uh, much more, I mean, explosive. I think he's taking much more reps because of the other two backs being gone. I think he was a change-up guy previously because he was like, he was the other guy coming in. Now he's, you know, trying to be the guy and he's having to carry the ball. I think he's in good shape, um, pushes himself hard. I'm very pleased with his ability to protect and catch the ball in the backfield. He's he working really hard. All those backs, guys, they, they, they deserve a lot of credit because those four guys do a lot of work with Prather being the fifth, who carries a large workload in practice and helps a lot in special teams. I think all those guys deserve a lot of credit. You've had some guys take some medical DQs over the past couple of years. You know, see Sam out there a lot, Michael Chigbu and those guys. What, what are those guys sticking around, hanging, hanging around the program, not just around the players, but their assistance and practice. How much do they mean to to you guys, the, your operation? Great. I mean, it's like having extra work. They can help. They can coach. They, a lot of them understand what we're trying to do. They've been through the tough times. They've had the rough years that we had, so they, they understand. They, they're like a big brother to some of these guys, and they're, they're extra coaches. So they're out there coaching, helping scout team, motivating guys. You want to use everybody you can to help your program. I think they do a good job doing that.